Welcome back to our second video series on a brand new uh, video series on Clona <laughs> <Clone and Now, laughs> called Mindful <laughs> Conversations. My name is Nikki Check. I'm your host, and I am very excited to have in studio Catherine Kritma with uh, Felt Sense Counseling. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. And I already asked, she offered... I can refer to her as Kat yes. instead of Catherine. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming into Studio Cat. Um, took a quick peek at your maybe your origin story, and I'd love you mm -hmm. to share it. I I had mentioned before we came on air. I think it's really important as we as humans travel through this uh, no like trust, and I think uh, people hearing your story will maybe reduce some of those those initial barriers that we so willingly throw up mm -hmm. all the time? Yeah, that's such a good question. So I grew up in classical dance, and things were very regimented and very mm. disciplined, and there was a lot of people pleasing involved in that. And then I moved very quickly into another sort of realm of the arts, which was documentary television producing. Fascinating. Yeah, and I loved it. So I lived in Toronto for about 15 years, and the work was incredible. I got to meet all kinds of people from all across Canada, and they were all suffering from all kinds of things, right, from marginalization to um, difficulties sort of with immigration and the medical system and all kinds of things. And what I really loved most about working with these people was um, – the deep healing that I was able to witness as they were able to tell their story. It was really, really beautiful. And so, um, yeah, my job was incredible, very creatively satiating. Everything was different every day. It was kind of rushed, fast paced. And then I fell and had a really big accident. I was curling, <laughs> don't know how to curl, brand new at curling, and I was not wearing a helmet. And I acquired a traumatic brain injury. Oh, God. Yeah, so that was absolutely terrifying. So I lost vision in my left eye, and I had whiplash, and I needed physio and vestibular therapy and vision therapy and all these things, and I really couldn't do the work that I loved and wanted to do. I just, I couldn't hold a camera, I couldn't edit, I couldn't do any of these things. And I was off for two and a half years, and I really had to figure out, like, what was I going to do with my life? Because my mm -hmm. identity depended so much and my sense of self-worth really depended on what I was doing for work. And I, yeah, I, I suffered from depression and anxiety and my mental health just really suffered. So as I was reading background information on you, I found it interesting um, because you're seeing it a lot in socials around that um, changing the way we're, saying it or thinking it so you mm -hmm. you you're sitting at this crossroads you have this choice that you have to make you can stay mm -hmm. traveling through this I'm no longer able to do this or you can choose to go right and say okay so here I am mm -hmm. what am I going to do with this new mm -hmm. choice Mm -hmm. how, how did you so traveling through mindset mindset makes a world of difference what you what you see and say will become mm -hmm. and it can be negative or it can be positive mm -hmm. how, how did you make that leap from dance to documentary to counseling how did you where what am I missing? Yeah, like what's the thread? How yeah. do all those things connect? Well, I think um, story is mm. really how they all connect. So as a dancer, that was just so rich for me in terms of the stories I was able to tell through the music and the lyricism and the body movement. Mm. And so that kind of... I see it. That I trend, see translated thread. really well into storytelling as a documentary television yep. producer. And then when I could not do that anymore, I really was trying to figure out like how could I translate this love of story that I had into still being able to work with stories in a new way. And I had so much help trying to figure out this, like it was really an identity thing for me. Like who am I yes. now that I 
want to tell stories in a different way. And so, yeah, so I decided to go back to school in my late 30s and change careers. And I did my master's in counseling psychology and I became a therapist. Congratulations. Thank you. So you are here in Kelowna. Yes. You moved to Kelowna. I am born and raised Ah. in Kelowna. Yeah, I'm an OG. I love Kelowna. All my family's here. And I moved out west, like to Toronto, to get into TV and film. Okay. And then when I had my accident, it just became really clear to me that I needed roots. Like I needed the support of huge unconditional family and friends and all those things. And so I came back. Okay. And your practice, Felt Sense Counseling, Yeah, you opened those doors? I opened those doors almost three years ago. It's very mm-hmm. exciting. <laughs> so there's some amazing stats for uh, businesses and entrepreneurial journey. If we can make it, if we can make it to year five, mm-hmm. the statistics are really <laughs> in our favor. So congratulations. You're ha- halfway year there. Three. <laughs> you're, you're over the halfway mark, uh, Kat. The, the practice, um, what kind of clients or patients are are best suited for you or any of the other counselors in the practice? Mm -hmm. Well, we see uh, a big, a very wide array of people coming in with different things. And I mean, we work with trauma, relationship issues, mood mood disorders. So anxiety Mm -hmm. and depression are really common. Um, And we also work with um, maybe softer things like that people don't actually think are issues in their lives, but when they show up to therapy, they realize they're engaging in patterns and habits that are kind of problematic. So that's things like people pleasing and perfectionism and overcompensating and overthinking. So let's, that's a beautiful segue. Let's talk, let's just drill down into people pleasing. Okay. I, I think you you said it could be a good thing. So talk to me. Yes. So people pleasing is not all bad. I really want people to know that because I think we get really stuck in this idea that if we're always prioritizing other people's needs um, and not thinking about ourselves, I just think we get really stuck thinking that there's something wrong with us. Mm. and there isn't so there's a couple things that are happening when you're people pleasing so it's probably something that you learned really early on when you were young to help you feel safe and Mm. loved and taken Mm -hmm. care of and approved of and you learned that really early on and so that's a pattern that you've just kind of kept up and maybe it's gotten more and more significant in your life and also Um, You've probably heard of the three F's when it comes to trauma responses. So those are fight, flight, Mm. flee. And the fourth one is called fawn, Mm. and that's people pleasing. Hmm. Yeah. So I want you to know, like, if you find yourself fawning, if if you have a history of either big T or little t traumas, it's very likely that you're pleasing to try and keep your body safe from all those trauma things that are coming up. Hmm. So... What can someone do? What questions? There's a great book, Change Your Questions to Change Your Life. Mm-hmm. What kinds of questions, if uh, people are listening to this and they're wondering or seeing themselves, oh my gosh, I'm a people pleaser, what kinds of things can they ask themselves to determine whether their people pleasing falls in like a, a range that would be okay or mm-hmm. maybe a range that might need some assistance mm-hmm. in ensuring that we have the 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 proper tools or things to make sure the bumpers in the bowling ball how do we yeah. stay in the lane yeah um such a great question so i think it's important to uh notice what your patterns and your behaviors are so for example are you oversharing all the time are you over committing all the time? Are you always saying yes, even when you really want to say no? <laughs> and how are you with boundaries? Do you have very porous boundaries? Are you able to set boundaries that stick? Do people mow over your boundaries? These are some of the questions to ask you. And also, I think maybe even more so than asking yourself those questions is, are you people pleasing by default? 
So people pleasing isn't bad, but if it is your default mode of operating, Mm. then it starts to become an issue and you're going to start to feel it. Like you're going to feel like you're not showing up authentically and that's not going to feel good. It's so fascinating. And I think there's, um, I think we've traveled through some generally as a civilization, some Mm -hmm. some challenging times over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's, Mm, a need to be aware of one's mental state Mm -hmm. and being open to setting aside those stigmas around uh care and and it's it's um I love that if we if in its simplest form if we just took your four questions and evaluated ourselves individually on each of those coming to see you in just that, in just that lane, will mm-hmm. allow people to maybe adjust some boundaries or maybe um, uh, change their their mode of operation just a smidge yeah. to make sure that they're traveling in in a in a safe zone for themselves. Yeah, yeah, and like it can be, it'll be very uncomfortable in the beginning. Right? Like, because people pleasers, I am a recovering one. We are not used to ruffling feathers. It feels very, very uncomfortable. So part of the process of, like, slowly creating gentle changes is how comfortable can you get with being uncomfortable? Mm. It happens very, very slowly. I love that. And, again, there's so much out there that you hear of people talking about um, a annual reservation. Uh, resolution will to be will be be uh comfortable being uncomfortable so if you if you begin to travel in that place it Mm -hmm. changes hard so Mm -hmm. I think the the more practice at it you have the better Mm -hmm. you'll get at it absolutely and having someone alongside of you guiding Mm -hmm. coaching giving you tools uh to do that important work, I think is, is sort of the beginning. And I think, Mm -hmm. I think if, again, if we look at the, the stigma around, um, the unfair stigma actually around counseling, uh, some people can see it as a, as a weakness or, uh, uh, maybe a, a derogatory mm-hmm. or not positive. And yet I think when we talk about that change in mindset, it's no different than going and getting your blood work done or no different mm-hmm. than getting uh, um, a checkup at the dentist. So how do we come in and and coming in in something that's that's just around people pleasing if you if you identify or recognize or see that that's maybe something that you do coming in around people pleasing uh would be a great start yeah it's a it is such a great start because sometimes it's helpful to sometimes you don't know at all what you want when you go to counseling you're just like i know i need to be here i have no idea what to do and you want the therapist to guide you that's great and then there's like, okay, I think this is the thing. I think people pleasing is the issue. And this is the thing that I'm actually comfortable getting vulnerable vulnerable about. So I'm going to open the door and like poke my toe in and see if this feels good. And then things start to open up. I think it's a, it's a great start. Um, Kat, is there anything that you would like to share or say to any of the listeners uh, an if then, if you're feeling this or experiencing this then, Mm -hmm. can you share Mm -hmm. with us? Yeah, so I think if you are feeling alone Mm. and scared and maybe isolated and also resentful, Mm-hmm. You're starting to feel resentful and maybe like you're taken advantage of or you're not actually sure who you even are if you're not doing this people-pleasing thing. If you're feeling those things, then I want you to know that you're already figuring out what people-pleasing is and if it's working or not working for you. So just the fact that you're already asking yourself those questions mm-hmm. means you're doing the work and you should be very, very proud of yourself. It's not yeah. easy and I want you to know you're not alone. 
Kat, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. It's wonderful to meet you and learn about your practice. And uh, I thank you for, for your journey. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Kat.